Hello everyone and welcome to my little video. This is my first video so I am hoping that I will be not too harsh on judging me about it. Um, and sorry if there's terrible mic feedback on me. Like I said, first video. So we're gonna go and talk in this video a little bit about guild training and guild cargo. Now guild training is a lot of little nifty little skills boosts that you can get throughout your character and your farm and a lot of different parts of guild. Now in order to do that you need something called a guild emblem. Now you can get that from various things like guild war, guild cargo, guild raccoon, old wombat, and feeding coco. My favorite way to get it is using guild cargo. Now guild cargo is shipments that come in on a train that you fill every week and if you get up to 10 a week you get a bunch of stuff including an artifact map, some extra guild emblem. Now this does take a lot of resources but it to me it is definitely worth using those resources up to do guild training. My guild training is at a level 53 so you will be most likely much lower when you watch this video too because you're currently starting or at the middle of your guild training. Um, when you level up your guild training you simply click donate and use the guild emblem. You get one free one each day. It levels up, sorry, it fills up this little uh, orb here. Once you get 100% you get each one of the talent points. Now the purple talent points you get one per page, which is attribute, game mode, production, and income. Now in the middle of your donation, if you hit a critical donation, you have a chance to get a universal talent point. Now universal talent point can be used in any of the four pages, while the purple talent point can be only used per page. Now the first two we're going to talk about is production and income. These two pages I would only recommend using the purple point. Do not waste your universal talent points in this because it is usually useless. So each page will have a mastery. Now, attribute mastery does 3% starting off damage reduction and goes forth all the way up to 20%. Game mode does luck all the way up to 100, sorry, 1000 and 100%. Um Production Master gives you heart boost. Now this isn't really something to focus on unless you are huge in farming, unless that's the sole purpose on why you're playing this game. Now Income Boost gives you Bounce Spiral. You can get up to 125 Bounce Spirals per day. These are free spirals, not the paid ones. If that is what you're looking for in order to boost yourself, definitely go for it. But like I said, I wouldn't recommend wasting Universal Talent Points in these. I prefer to have more Kingdom Fame because I use that a lot. And since I do Arena daily, I like to get my Silver Stars off my Arena. If you don't do Arena, don't even bother with it. It's definitely worth it though in my opinion to get 160 Silver Stars. Now you don't need this max out, you just need it at level 1 to start benefiting from it. Uh, production wise, unless you're doing 14 farm orders per day, do not get these. I wasted them because I normally don't do anything in my farm. My in-game waifu, which I'm very grateful for, does my farming and we usually just do five and leave it at that. And by we, I usually mean her. Now I would, once I get a chance to reset, I'm just going to do my regular boost. I'm um, definitely going to boost up my fishing because I do that a lot. Um, fishing helps you get things like salmon and lobsters so you can make your food or give it to your guild leader like I do in order to make food. Now game mode is my favorite part to boost up. This is where I would recommend anybody and everybody to feed your points in, your universal points, because when you are still leveling up, when you're still trying to gear up, you want the luck that mode master gives you. Getting up to 96 points gives you 1,100 plus to your luck, which means you'll have a chance of getting better chance of getting gold gear and emblems, 70, 60, sorry, 60, 80, and 90 emblems. But it is to get united by cards. Now, in here, boost up whatever you feel like doing. My main recommendation to start off for anybody would be damage boost to monsters in realm because that is definitely going to help you get ahead in card realm, especially nightmare modes, to help you unlock void, to get your equipment realm damage up. 
normally you can have people help you in equipment but when you're trying to do solo cards this helps a lot now guild wars something that we don't do often but i have it because it does help boost it up and if you are taking part in guild war definitely focus on those and I do my kingdom contribution because, once again, I use all my kingdom points as much as I can. Now, as far as your attributes go, this is a page to focus on for sure. Your accuracy should be the first thing you level up. It increases your hit. Now, one thing that's very useful on this page is levels your BR, your battle rank. This helped me get to my kings, my emperor levels. This definitely is where I would put most of my focus other than the maxing out game mode this part leveling up your accuracy is a must um thing good thing about game mode and attributes is they only use one point each unlike production and income that uses three points per level so 20 points gets you a crazy max out still gives you a lot of resist and gives you br now once you turn level 84, I believe it is 84, that you unlock the last four part of this page. This one increases your attack and crit at every three levels, they change. This one is HP, defense, and block at every three levels. And this is attack, HP, defense, and dodge at every four levels. So this will help you get boosted in damage greatly after level 84. Um, I am very squishy, so I do like to get my defense where I can. Damage resist 20% is definitely worth picking up for level 40. This does take quite a lot of talent points to level up, though. Now, between damage to warriors and damage to summoners, all these class boosts, it's not really something worth focusing on unless you are over level 90 and have a lot of guild training points to spare into it. Uh, whatever class you find the most annoying that you want to take down, that's what you focus on. For me, I personally hate warriors when it comes to things like arena, um, guild wars. I they, I cannot stand how high of a defense they have. So therefore, that is my boosted up max. I made the mistake of putting mages instead of cleric, but clerics are my second most annoying class, so even though I am a cleric class myself, I personally know how annoying to get, it, so therefore I try to take them down as fast as I can. I'll definitely boost that up instead. So that is my little video. If you have any questions on where to start off, where to go, um, let me know and I will answer what I can.